childhood is wanting a variety of different baked sweets and someone telling you no. Adulthood is wanting a variety of different baked sweets and being able to go right to Mickey D's to get every single one you want. <laughs> Whenever you want. Get the new glazed pull apart donut and a 99 cents any sized iced coffee with pumpkin spice flavor. Sweet. Prices and participation may vary. Limited time only. Iced coffee promo available until 11 a.m. Ba da ba ba ba. Childhood is wanting a variety of different baked sweets and someone telling you no. Adulthood is wanting a variety of different baked sweets and being able to go right to Mickey D's to get every single one you want. <laughs> Whenever you want. Get the new glazed pull apart donut and a 99 cents any sized iced coffee with pumpkin spice flavor. Sweet. Prices and participation may vary. Limited time only. Iced coffee promo available until 11 a.m. Ba da ba ba ba. Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Our listener support campaign continues. You can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. As a Patreon supporter, you get access to our monthly newsletter with uh, news on upcoming plans and projects for each uh, effort, as well as a little bit of a personal update each month. And you also get to pick our summer series for the Amazing World of Radio. That's over at patreon.greatdetectives.net. But now it's time for Casey Crime Photographer. The original air date, December the 11th, 1947, and the title is The New Will. The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> Say, Casey, I'll bet you photographed a lot of famous people. Well, I'm not so sure, Ethelbert. How come? Well, it's like this. Many a guy who looks like a ball of fire today is nothing but a wet match tomorrow. Oh, I get it. You gotta wait before you're sure a guy is really famous. Right. Sometimes it takes years and years to ensure fame. Sure, like the years and years of leadership that have made Anchor Hawking the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, The New Will. <laughs> One of the showplaces of our city is the mansion of multimillionaire Bradford Randall. In the richly furnished library of this mansion at 8 o'clock in the evening, Randall, his daughter Agatha, and a dapper, handsome man face each other and... This is one time, Father, that you're not going to have your own way. I've made up my mind to marry Giuseppe, and that is that. Oh, no, Agatha. You only think you're going to make this gigolo my son-in-law. Don't call me a gigolo, Mr. Randall. Oh, then what are you? I'm a man of honor who comes to you like a gentleman and asks for your daughter to be my wife. For that, I'm insulting. Hmm. How much money have you got, Mr. Ranova? I'm Count Ranova. All right, all right, Count. But answer my question. Money is not everything. Uh, well, you're not finding a soft spot with me. Father, I won't let you. Shut up, Agatha. Now then. 
You get out of here, Anova, and stay out. If he goes, I go with him. If you do anything foolish, Agatha, you'll regret it. And so will your boyfriend. And to convince you both that I mean business, I'm going to make out a new will tomorrow that will cut off Agatha with the minimum request allowed by law. Father. You know I don't bluff, Agatha. Tomorrow morning, I'll have Devins draw up a new will. And it'll stand until you come to your senses. Come on, Giuseppe. Let's get out of here. Yes, Agatha. <laughs> You'll be back, my dear. And still single. You? Oh, I absolutely hate you. <laughs> I'll show you I don't bluff. Uh, hello, this is uh, Bradford Randall. Call Mr. Devons to the phone, will you? Uh. Oh, um, hello, Devons. I've got a job for you to do first thing in the morning. No, wait a minute. You better do it tonight. I, I want a new will drawn up, and I want you to bring it here to me within the next couple of hours. Uh, don't argue. Do as I tell you. Well, that's better. Now get yourself a pencil, Devons, and take notes of what I say. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Looks as though you've done a pretty good job with this new will on short notice, Devons. <laughs> so, I'm uh, leaving practically my entire estate to, uh, what is it, the Society for the Relief and Rehabilitation of War Victims and uh, Displaced Persons. <laughs> you told me to name some charity, any charity as your beneficiary. Oh, it'll do, it'll do. Of course, when that nitwit daughter of mine agrees to forget about her count, we'll destroy this and make her an heiress again. Yes, I was going to have you draw this new will up tomorrow, but Agatha and her lounge lizard might be getting married while you're doing it. But they won't after I spring this on her at breakfast. Oh, we'll need uh, witnesses to make this good, I suppose. Naturally. Well, I'll, uh, I'll get my butler and... Uh... Fieldstone? Uh, yes, Mr. Randall. Fieldstone, get one of the other servants and come in here, will you? Uh, there's only the upstairs maid on duty now, sir. It's after 11 o'clock. Well, o she'll do. She'll do. Get her and hurry up, will Very you? Well, sir. Very after well. 11. By the time I get now, home... Now, quit your crabbing, Devons. Well, why shouldn't I You'd crab? better not. I made you and I can break you. Oh, I didn't mean it. Uh, here is uh, Sophie, the maid, Oh, uh, come in, Sophie. Come in, come in. I want you and uh, Fieldstone to sign a paper. What kind of paper, sir? What does that matter? Here, here's a pen. Here. Excuse me, sir, hmm? but I have been told never to sign my name to anything I have not read over, sir. When you work for me, you do as I tell wait, you. Wait, wait a minute, Mr. Randall. Huh? From a legal standpoint, this girl and your butler must know what they're signing. Sophie, yes. Fieldstone, this document is a new will in which Mr. Randall bequeathed the bulk of his estate to, um... The Society for the Relief and Rehabilitation of War Victims and Displaced Persons. Well, if that is the case, uh, you sir... You needn't have explained all that in order to make the thing legal, Devons. I'll tear this will up as soon as that girl of mine gets some sense. Uh, well, here's my John Hancock. Now, you sign here, young woman. As a witness. Yes, sir. You, Fieldstone? Here. Uh, very good, sir. All right. That's all. You can go now. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Yes. Oh, uh, Fieldson. Uh, yes, sir. Have me called at seven in the morning. Uh, yes, Mr. And uh, get my daughter up at the same time. I want her to have breakfast with me. Bring up some more lemons, Walter. Okay, at the point. I should get more sleep. Hello, Edelbert. Uh, huh? Casey. Hi, pal. I think so. I'm never sure at this hour of the morning. What are you doing around here? It's only a little after eight. I'm working the early shift this week, eight in the morning till 4 p.m. Have Walter rustle me up some coffee, will you, pal? Hey, Walter, breakfast for Casey. Bring it here to the bar. Okay. <laughs> I suppose you reported for work. Then made a quick sneak before your city desk got wise. Eh? Guy's got to eat, doesn't he? Well, look at me. I already had six wheat cakes, half a grapefruit, a plate of ham and eggs, two cups of coffee, and right now. 
I feel fine. Yeah, you look it. Well, don't mention food again till I get some. Casey. Oh, well, hello, Annie. Good morning. Come on, get on your bicycle. We're going places. What? Not till I exercise my. Oh teeth, yes, Annie. we're going to Bradford Randall's house right now. Bradford Randall. The Bradford Randall. One of his servants went to call him at, oh, about an hour ago, about seven o'clock, and found him dead with a bullet through his heart. Captain oh. Logan and his homicide squad are at the house now. Holy jump. Bradford Randall's one of the biggest guys in this town. Yeah, and one of the crookedest, too. But his murder is front page and double column, Casey. Come on. Okay, cancel my breakfast, Ethelbert. It'll be on the fire by now, Well, Captain. then eat it yourself. But I had... Uh, well, after all, I ate just a little snack. Almost an hour ago. Our story will continue in just a moment. How many times have you said to yourself, I'd give anything in the world for a cup of coffee right now? Now, what you meant was that you wanted a cup of good, hot, steaming coffee without having to fuss around in the kitchen and without waiting even a minute. Well, here's the answer. Just a cup, a spoon, and a glass jar. A glass jar of soluble coffee. Put a spoonful of this new kind of coffee in a cup, add hot water, and there you are. It's as quick as that. It's as convenient as that if you make sure to buy your soluble coffee in a glass jar. You see, glass jars are easy to open. Just a twist of your wrist, that's all. Then there's the matter of flavor and freshness. Anchor glass jars protect soluble coffee from moisture or any other contamination. Enjoy all of the convenience of soluble coffee products by insisting on glass jars. Most of the better packers of soluble coffee protect their products by using clean sanitary anchor glass containers and anchor caps, both products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. What happened, Captain Logan? Uh, one of the servants discovered Randall dead in his bed when she went to call him, Miss Williams. He'd been shot through the heart around uh, 3 a.m., the M.E. says, with his own gun, a forty-five automatic. We found the gap, but it had been wiped clean of the fingerprints. Well, that rules out suicide. Any suspects, Captain? Uh, too many, Miss Williams. Off the record, suspect number one is a party boy who calls himself Count Giuseppe Renova. He'd been out with Randall's daughter and brought her home about an hour before the murder was committed. Well, what's his possible motive? Mm, you don't read the gossip columns, Casey. Miss Ronova's been giving Miss Randall a heavy rush. Yeah, she was all set to marry the guy. Some of the servants heard a noisy quarrel between Randall, his daughter, and Renova early last evening, during which Randall said he'd disinherit her if she didn't give Renova the air. He threatened to change his will first thing this morning. But after daughter and boyfriend left, both pretty sore, Randall got his lawyer and executed a new will last night. It cuts Agatha Randall out of the estate and how. Yeah, but at 3 a.m. when he was murdered, Renova thought she was still a big heiress. That's the picture. As she's suspect number two. Either one may have killed Randall to prevent him making a new will, which they didn't know had already been made. I've met Agatha Randall, and I can believe she'd kill her own father if he got in her way. She must be a sweet character, just like her old man. What are your other suspects, Logan? Anyone who was in this house. For instance, there are 16 servants. And only the only one who seems sorry that Randall's dead is the butler, Fieldston. Hmm. I'm not convinced he's very sincere. Uh, popular guy, this Randall. Uh, <laughs> Renova, after he left Miss Randall at the door downstairs, could have gotten into this bedroom by climbing that trellis, Logan. You know? Sure. And so could anyone else. Howard Devons, for example. Well, Randall's lawyer? He had no love for his boss. Yeah, I've heard that. Now, I'm expecting Devons here any minute. I'm letting him have the will we found. He'll need it to settle the estate. Now, where'd you find the will? Lying folded on top of that dresser. Well, let's get out of this room and go downstairs. Oh, I, uh, I beg your pardon, sir. What are you doing outside this door, Fieldston? I was just about to knock, Captain. Mr. Devons has arrived, and I came to tell you, sir. Uh, where is he? Uh, downstairs in the library with Miss Randall. <laughs> And Count Renova's there also, sir. Now get that maid who was your co-witness to the will last night, Fieldston. Then both of you come to the library. I'll get Sophie at once, sir. Come on, Miss Williams. Yes, sir. You know, Logan, it looked as though that butler was listening at the door. Yeah, it looked very much that way. Why do you want him and that maid in the library, Captain? To verify their signatures on the will before I hand it over to Devons. Oh, I see. Now, there's the library. Now, I won't believe that that will can stand up in court, Mr. Devons. My father never meant to cut me off. I drew that will, Miss Randall, and it'll stand up. But... Oh, 
Captain Logan. You're Mr. Devon? Yes. Mind if I shoot some pictures here, Logan? Oh, go ahead, Casey. I mind. I've had enough of you policemen and newspaper people around here. This is my house, and uh, I want... Remember the will, Miss Randall. This is not your house. Oh, uh, Giuseppe, what am I going to do? Do not worry, my Agatha. I will find lawyers who will break for us that crazy will. Well, of Count course, is an now, optimist, yes, Annie. Mm. And how he declares so. himself in. Isn't this a gorgeous room? It's about the last word, I say. No windows in it. I guess that's for all-year-round air conditioning, Mm-hmm. And invisible lighting. I'll lay down this film case and get a few shots. Oh, excuse me, Captain. Here is the maid, sir. Oh, yes. You're the girl who witnessed Mr. Randall's will last night with Fielson? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, look, I can't make out this signature. Uh, what's your name? Zofia Jadwiga Elżbieta Kupolajczyk. Uh, oh. <laughs> I think Captain Logan will call you Sophie, Sophie. Yeah. Well, look at this document, uh, Sophie. Is it the one you witnessed? I have been told never to say a thing I'm not sure of, sir. Can I look at the paper close and careful? Yes, I want you to. Here, take it. Thank you, sir. What is that? I shot a picture of you, Sophie. Sorry if the flashbulb uh, startled you. It uh, did, sir. Excuse me for being so foolish. Uh, look, do you identify that will? It uh, looked like the paper I saw. Uh, look at the signature, Sophie, and, and the rest of it. Is it your signature? Oh, yes, it is me. I write that last night. It is the will. Well, I'm glad we got that set up. Well, hey, what, what happened? happened to the lights? Oh, oh, Where's yes, the switch? Yes, Turn on those lights. I'll find the switch, sir. Oh, there they are. Oh, what? Oh, Sophie. What happened to you? So, somebody hit me when the light go out and pulled that paper from my hand. The will. The will is gone. <laughs> All right, every one of you has been searched and we didn't find the will. But someone in this room switched off the lights, struck Sophie and took the will from her hand, and whoever did it isn't going to get away with it. Now, the thing somewhere in this library, and my men will find it if they have to tear the walls down. Uh, Sergeant, yes, sir. you and the boys go to work. Okay, Captain. Everybody else, get out of here. You can seriously believe that I had anything to do with this strange theft? You were in this room and the will disappeared, Devons. But, of course, you consider poor Miss Randall your principal suspect, Captain. What makes you think my principal suspect isn't you, Mr. Ranova? Count Ranova. Uh, now, all of you get out of here. Now, don't try to leave this house. Come, Giuseppe. It would be a pleasure to get away from these... These people. A great pleasure, my Agatha. Hey, you and Miss Williams get out too, Casey. Okay. Let me get my film case, pal. I'll bring you a photographic case, Mr. Casey. Oh, thanks, Fielson. Well, just put it down in the hall here. Very good, sir. I'm closing this library door, Sergeant. And don't let anybody in, and don't you or the boys come out until you find that will. Okay, Kevin. Uh, will you need me anymore, sir? No, go on about your business, Fielson. I'll find you if I want you. Very good, sir. Uh, Casey... Come into this room, then. and you, Miss Williams. I want to have some gab without any interruptions. Look, what do you think? The job was timed beautifully, Logan. Right after I'd used up a flashbulb, if I'd had another one set in my camera, I could have touched it off and caught the thief dead to rights. Now, didn't either of you notice who stood nearest that light switch just before the room went dark? I didn't. Neither did I. But I'm sure three people weren't anywhere near the light switch. It's yourself, Logan, the lawyer, Devins, and that little maid, Sophie. Now, that leaves Agatha, Renova... The butler, Fieldston, you, Casey, and Miss Williams. Mm, see, you know, I just thought of something, Logan. Yeah. That butler, Fieldston, closed the door when he came into the library. But if that door had been open, the room wouldn't have gone entirely dark. Say, hey. and Fieldston was trying to get an earful outside that room upstairs. Oh, oh. What was that? That's a man. Upstairs. Come on. I see him. Hey, it's the butler. He's lying on the floor. His head is covered with blood. Someone sucked him. Turn him over, Logan. Open his coat. Yeah. His heart's beating. He, he's only knocked out. Hey, that paper sticking out of the inside pocket of his coat. Casey, it's the stolen will. Oh, oh, my head. Now, look, the doc says you haven't been badly hurt, Fieldston. You were just put to sleep pretty rough. Now, tell us about it. Yeah, we're very curious. Well, all, all I know, gentlemen, is that he was passing along the, the upstairs hall and... When I passed the door of Miss Randall's room, I, I thought I heard it open. Then, then something hit me. Did you see the person who hit you? No, no, Captain. I uh, this is what you were hit with. That silver candlestick. Yeah. You recognize it? Uh, it usually stands on Miss Randall's dressing table. You heard Miss Randall's door open just before you were caught. I thought I did, yes. 
Captain, do you think Miss Randall... I'm would... asking the questions, Fieldston. And here's the one that pays the grand prize. Why was that will in your pocket? Will? Randall's new will. No, I, I don't know... Now, what don't you... try to play innocent. You hit Sophie in that library and snatched the will. I did nothing of the kind. You searched We know him. why the will wasn't on you when you were searched, fella. And how you got it out of the library. Mr. Casey, I swear... Save it. The way I helped your scheme, Fieldston, with my film case... You stuck the will in that film case after you snatched it and before you turned on the lights. Then you carried the case out in the hall where I was dumb enough to leave it. Then you opened the case and put the will in your pocket. That isn't true. What possible motive could you I... You knew that Agatha Randall, or Ranova, would pay anything you asked for that will. They wanted to destroy it. And evidently, they double-crossed you. Are you going to protect the person who tried to kill you, or are you going to talk? I'm going to talk. You're a sensible guy. My head is beginning to clear, Captain. Now I realize that I've been double-crossed. Count Renova told me that he and Miss Randall would pay me half a million dollars if I, if I could get that new will. Well, I got it. But they double-crossed me. One of them tried to kill me. You bring them here, and, and I'll tell them that to their faces. Get them, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Well, Casey, I guess that takes care of that. Mm-hmm. It takes care of that, Logan, but you still got the murder of Randall to solve. Captain Logan put Miss Randall and that Count Runover under arrest, huh, Casey? Yeah, he's holding him for questioning, Ethelbert, which means they're in jail without formal charges being lodged against him. They've admitted nothing and denied everything, Ethelbert. And as sore as the butler is against them, he admits he didn't see either of them hit him. I have a hunch that neither Agatha nor her phony count bumped off Randall. Hunches aren't accepted as evidence either, Mr. Casey. Well, who else could be the culprit, Casey? Culprit? Yeah. Oh, look, pal, you've been reading that bad literature again. Culprit. Where do you get words like that out of true detective comics? No, William D. Shakespeare mentions culprits, and Alan Edward Poe and Charles Makepeace Dickens. Uh, yeah, you win, well, then tell me, who else besides Runover and Miss Randall... Look, look, I'm going to ask you a question, my literary friend. Pal, if you were a lawyer, would you kill a client right after he'd signed a will leaving his money to charity, a legitimate charity that you selected, and then bust a second guy over the head in order to prevent that will from being destroyed by the daughter? Hmm? This is a, a, a hi hypothetical question, huh, Casey? Yeah, highly high hypothetical level. Oh, extra highly hypothetical. Oh, Lay layoff. Come on, what's your answer, pal? Hmm. Am I a lawyer making good dough? Plenty, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I got a wife and kids? No wife, no kids. How do I get along with the old lady? Okay. At least there's no scandal about you, anyway. Hmm. See, I gotta ask these questions, Casey, because I'm awful ignorant about the lawyer I am, see? Mm-hmm. I see. Well, now that you're enlightened, how about it? But uh, tell me one thing more. Have I got good sense? Well, I think the lawyer has. Hmm. Huh. Say, was that a crack? I don't know what you mean, pal. Oh. Hmm. Well, after mature deliberation, Casey, I've come to the conclusion that if I got dough, a happy family life, and ain't no crackpot, I would be a first-degree chump to take a chance of broiling myself in a hot seat by doing a job of murder. Yeah, that's the same conclusion I reached, Edward. Now that you have Devons out of the way, where you go from here? I don't know, Annie, but I still have my hunch. Well, try eliminating all the Randall servants now. None of them like their boss or his daughter. Start with that little housemaid, Sophie. You can get rid of her quickly. I'm not giving that poor washed-out gal a second thought. Is that the dame who Fieldstone gave the black eye when he snatched the will? Mm -hmm. A Polish girl. Mm -hmm. Awfully sweet. I spent quite a little time talking to her, Casey. Yeah. She's been in this country only a few years. She's a war refugee. That's so? Poor thing. You know what the war did to Poland. Mm. The Germans invaded and the Russians invaded. And she, had, she and her family had a terrible time. How could she stand working for a guy like Randolph? Amongst all the other crooked things he did, he was a notorious war property. Yeah, she witnessed that new will. She was told its provisions. Hmm? Annie, come on. We're going to call on Sophie. Yes, Mr. Casey. I killed Mr. Randall. And I hit that butler, Fieldston, too. I was pretty sure you did, Sophie. After I started thinking, I... I wouldn't have accused you otherwise. 
If you had not accused, I would have told the police anyway soon. Because now I'm sure they will not again lose that bad man's new will. That leaves his money to the society, doesn't it, for the relief of war victims? Yes. The will won't be lost again. And it won't be broken, Sophie. I believe you, Miss Williams. Tell us what you meant to tell the police. In our town, in Poland, war was very bad. I see my mother killed, and my father. My little sister Paula and I, we sleep in streets and get food where we can get it from. You would not like to hear about that. It is not nice to think of it. Before, I have seen my two brothers taken away by soldiers. They never come back. Finally, my little sister, Paula, she lied down to sleep and do not wake. She was too hungry. Things happened to me, too, in the war. But I am strong and I live. I have uncle in America who get me over here where I get job in Mr. Randall's house. Sometime I can hear Mr. Randall say how the war has made him more rich than he was before. Then last night he asked me to witness that will. Which left his money to war victims. Yes. And he say something which made me know he would change the will if he had the chance and leave everything to his daughter again. A woman as bad as he is. You didn't give him the chance? No. I went to his room while he was sleeping, and I used the gun I know he keep there. How about Fieldston? I saw him take the will he had stolen from your box, Mr. Casey, and I suspect he will sell it to Miss Randall, who will destroy it. I slip into her room and get candlestick. I, I think that is all. Now, Miss Williams, Mr. Casey, take me to police. Casey? I... Yes. I'm not afraid, and I have no regret. You see, we who have felt war have died many times. Another time does not matter. We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. Just in time for Christmas shopping, Anchor Hawking presents the perfect answer to your problem of giving something beautiful and practical. A set of Jadeite dinnerware. Jadeite, spelled J-A-D-E-I-T-E, Jadeite. It has the lovely texture of Chinese porcelain, the color of green jade. It's as sturdy and heat-proof as the Fire King oven glass you break with. Almost anyone will be delighted to receive a beautiful 35-piece Jadeite dinner service consisting of six cups, six saucers, six dessert plates, six salad plates, six dinner plates, one vegetable bowl, a platter, and a sugar and creamer set. All of this for less than $5. Jadeite, a product of Anchor Glass, can also be purchased in open stock. Now, you'll find Jadeite dinnerware at chain stores, department stores, and most other stores selling chinaware and glass. Ask for Jadeite by name. The newest triumph of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. We who have felt war have died many times. Another time doesn't matter. What's that, Casey? Huh? What'd you say? Bobby? Oh, nothing, nothing. He's been muttering to himself like that ever since Sophie repeated her confession to the cops, Ethelbert. Hmm. I guess I have, any. What'll be done about that girl, Sophie? She'll be sent to a hospital for the criminal insane. The docs say she's crazy, huh? In the legal definition. She's incapable of distinguishing between right and wrong. She never had much chance to get acquainted with what's right... In the legal definition, did she? No, Ethelbert. She didn't even realize that there's never a justification for murder. That's a fact, Annie. Yeah, and many people in Europe and Asia are just like her. People who as children saw nothing but war, and whose only teaching was that might makes right, and that the end justifies the means. Boy, you know, we're just lucky that that philosophy hasn't become basic training for a lot of American kids. So far. 
You know, the anniversary of Pearl Harbor was last Sunday. And in two weeks, we celebrate Christmas. I think a lot of people over here have forgotten the meaning of both those days. Hmm. It's time all of us started thinking and doing. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation. Makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deese. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Lives are lost needlessly every year when people die of tuberculosis. You do your part to prevent tuberculosis when you buy and use Christmas seals. And be sure to do your Christmas mailing early. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, a bit more of a somber slash profound conclusion in the Blue Note than uh, we're used to. But very interesting thoughts that I think I will leave the listener to ponder. I thought it was a good episode with some uh, better than average uh, banter in the Blue Note. And it certainly did go in an interesting direction. Over at bluenotebulletin.blogspot.com, uh, Dr. Joe Webb uh, notes that uh, the name of Fieldstone, uh, which is used for the butler in this episode, that Alonzo Dean Cole had used that last name a mere two months before in the wedding breakfast. He also went ahead and added up the caloric value of Casey's light, snack breakfast, and it comes to 1,200 calories, so a very big breakfast in reality. Now we turn to uh, listener comments and feedback. Got some good feedback from Oily and Todd on Twitter, uh, enjoying the uh, top secrets of the FBI. And then uh, we have uh, this question came in from Nancy. I'll, hi, Adam. I listen to your podcast daily and would like to know if there are any newscast uh, s- snippets left over from all these radio shows. I'm thinking they're usually edited out, but it would be fun to uh, hear what was going on in the world when the shows were broadcasted. Well, thanks so much for the question, Nancy. Uh, in answer to that, uh, I guess there are a couple of uh, potential snippets. One is if there is a news uh, bulletin uh, during the radio program or immediately before or after. And honestly, people who uh, uh, transfer and digitize old-time radio programs uh, they, I've never heard of a case of them editing that out because, you know, that's part of the program. It also helps to uh, establish its actual air date. So those get left in. You can hear that on things like Mrs. Warren's Key. And they even get left in when it's a local bulletin. Uh, there was an episode from the 1960s Johnny Dollar when uh, most of the episodes that we have and circulation came from, I think it was Buffalo, uh, and there was a bulletin about some snow that was uh, delaying a school bus. So those things tend to be left in if they are present in the recording. Now, and this was a trend, particularly when you get into the 
middle 1950s was to cut the length of uh, radio programs, uh, and this, I guess, relevant to detective programs, cut the length of the time slot from half an hour to 25 minutes, and then go ahead and tack on a news uh, program five minutes. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really work in the digitization of the uh, programs, uh, so I don't know if transcription discs come with the five-minute news on them. But in most cases, I hear these 25-minute programs as standalones. And that kind of makes sense, because the program has ended, and now we're on to the next show, which is news, and you wouldn't include five minutes of uh, news, or, you know, for the same reason you wouldn't include if they had five minutes of music or five-minute cooking show. There's only one detective program I ever remember having one of those uh, sort of five-minute newscast on, and that was an episode of The Lineup, a police procedural show. And honestly, I think part of it is that The Lineup as a series is just so incredibly hard to get in order. There are so many uh, duplicate files, you know, two different names for the same episodes, uh, two different dates or three different dates upon which an episode may have aired. Getting that in chronological order was just a mess. So there was an episode of the lineup, I think it was the Solvent Sister Saga, that uh, included the five-minute newscast afterwards. Whether it was on the transcription disc or whether it was a home recording, I don't know. But that series is such a mess and so hard to figure out that including the news program is a good way for researchers as well as people who uh, would listen to it in the future would be able to uh, verify what the date the program aired was. But thank you so much for the question. Thank you to Jack, Patreon supporter since November 2019, currently supporting us at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support, Jack. And that will do it for today. If you are listening to this uh, on YouTube, uh, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. But join us back here tomorrow for the adventures of Bill Lance. Thursday, we'll be bringing you Billy Swift, Boy Detective. Next Monday, we'll be back with another episode of Casey Crime Photographer. And then next Thursday, we'll be getting into Philo Vance. And next Saturday, we'll be getting into Tales of the Texas Rangers. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. And follow us uh, over on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Uh, from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. You might have noticed a change in your neighborhood lately. Yep, Sprint stores are now T-Mobile stores. Now that Sprint is T-Mobile, you get more coverage, value, and benefits than ever before. We've invested billions to bring our 5G from big cities to small towns across America. And great coverage is just the start. From high-speed mobile hotspot data to weekly deals and giveaways, our customers get tons of great benefits. Head to your new T-Mobile store to learn more. Qualifying service and capable device required. Coverage not available in some areas. Some uses may require certain plan or features. See T-Mobile.com. You did it. You woke up today. You even got out of bed. You deserve a reward. We can't all be morning people, but we can all get McDonald's for breakfast. Right now, mix and match a chicken McGriddles or a McChicken biscuit for just three bucks. Order ahead on the Mickey D's app. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with combo meal. Single item at regular price. Mobile order and pay at participating McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.